Hello, it is Sound Therapy Arts TV here again in the studio. And it is Vancouver and it's raining, but we're nice and dry here. And today I have a fabulous artist, photographer, uh, Mark, and his uh, pictures are going to be running in the background throughout the interview. We'll be talking about them a little bit and how he got involved in the uh, Union Gospel Mission Photo 101. And we have here Keila, and Keila is going to be talking about uh, the Union Gospel Missions programs and how they help people uh, in various ways. So thank you very much. And um, so Mark, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do or why you're here? Um, I came to Union Gospel Mission because I've been struggling with uh, alcohol and drugs for uh, probably decades. Um, and going through the program, I was offered uh, to take a photo 101 course I still can't get over looking at my pictures. Um, and uh, beginning to learn how to express my feelings, which I had been stuffing for a lot of my, a lot of my life. Um, and photography's opened up uh, some avenues as well as uh, writing, poetry, so that now I get to investigate uh, how to experience feelings and, uh, and uh, show the world uh, a views that I can see sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the Union Gospel Mission is in the downtown east side of Vancouver, and um, this photo here, you called um, the Spirit Within. Yeah, the Spirit Within. When you're when you're in addiction and uh, going up and down the street uh, looking for the next thing, um, really don't know who you are, but uh, you have the white cloak of of that uh, I, everything's okay and I'm doing good and big smiles for your friends and you know so that you can put on your outer armor and really when the blackness inside is you really don't know who you are or what you want and, and when you become clean in recovery it's you get to investigate that black side you get to find out that there is actually color in there so becoming clean and sober in the beginning when you're you're sober right you're not pushing down your emotions with alcohol anymore, things are coming up. So it must be difficult with these emotions. So you were lucky to be able to have a program where you can explore those emotions in a healthy way through art, right? And so, and, and when we're living in the downtown east side, there's people, there's a lot of suffering there and lots of people don't see anything pretty there. But in lots of your pictures, you found really interesting shots and very dramatic shots. And um, do you just have your camera with you all the time? Or how did you get some of these shots? Like those clouds are fabulous. Um, sometimes I've purposely taken the camera and gone out. Uh, and there's other times where I really wish I did have the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I am learning something that I've never experienced before. Um, I've always wanted to pursue something, but because when you're in addiction, you really can only concern about what am I going to eat, where, where's my next score, uh, how do I stay dry, that kind of stuff. You don't really learn that. So now, not only do I get to learn something new, um, but I also get to ex learn how to also deal with myself. Mm -hmm. in that spirit, right? So, so now I get to, it's almost, it, it serves me on so many different levels, uh, mm -hmm. expressing art and also uh, yeah, yeah, so I would and life. Yeah, I'm guessing that maybe you might have been homeless at some point or? I was, I left the family home when I was a couple months before I turned 16. Oh, God. And uh, hadn't found downtown Vancouver, mm -hmm. uh, struggled. Uh, till my mid twenties, got settled with a, a girl, and uh, we have two beautiful daughters, um, and have gone back and forth with addiction. And it progressed until yes, again, I was homeless again for a year before. Well, our government, unfortunately or fortunately, will pay for housing. So I then I when I it became too much again, addiction became too much again. I, I turned to Union Gospel Mission to help me on my road to recovery. 
Mm -hmm. And so Union uh, Gospel Mission has a couple of uh, housing options. There's the one where people just show up, and then there's the residence as well, right? So um, do you want to talk a little bit about how that works? Sure. We would more talk about it in terms of shelter and yeah. housing. So we have uh, an, what we call our emergency shelter, and that's open 365 days a year. So someone can show up if they need shelter that night, and we have uh, 72 beds for that. And during extreme weather, uh, there's more. We work in conjunction with the city for that. And then we have what Mark went through is the drug and alcohol recovery program. It's a six-month live-in program within the facility. We have 64 beds for that. Um, it's a fantastic transformational program, as you can see through Mark. And then we also have housing, where it's absence-based housing. People want to live in a safe place where there's not the temptation of drugs and alcohol within the building. So we have that both in the same building as our main facility and on the other, on the end of the block. We have another facility just for housing and one in Surrey as well for families. So I would imagine um, uh, having a, a, knowing that you have a, a safe, warm, dry place to sleep is uh, critical to being able to start doing other things like um, the photography. So your family life when you were young probably wasn't um, that comfortable, otherwise you wouldn't have left at 16. And um, the same would, would be for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so my uh, father uh, drank a lot, you know, violence and stuff like that. He was a nice person, right? But growing up as a victim of, of that, right, um, you are only concerned with how you're feeling. You know, I felt mm -hmm. this, I felt that. Or my mom had to feel this or that, right? And I had a, a friend who was uh, in AA. And he would always try to drink. He'd go, Rita, come drink with me. And I'd go, no, I'll go to a meeting. He'd go, come drink with me. I'd go, no, I'll go to a meeting. And so I'd drag him off to the meetings. And what I learned there um, was some compassion. Because there are people there who are trying to stay off alcohol and drugs. And, and they slip up. And they do things that really um, hurt someone. But it really hurts them, too. And um, they have all this guilt and pain. And um, I thought, oh, wow, my poor dad, you know? So I think having compassion or learning compassion, and we, I don't, you're not necessarily born with it. I think you learn it through experiences, right? But um, I didn't learn that until I was an adult. <laughs> yeah. Right, and um, the United Gospel Mission, um, th I would imagine that people are working there by choice. It's not where you're going to be making um, big CEO uh, $100,000 incomes or anything like that. So the people that are working there are doing it because they want to, I would imagine. Yeah, and um, the Union Gospel Mission um, they're, you hear that name quite often, but they're not necessarily affiliated with each other. If there's one in Seattle and one in Toronto and one in Vancouver, um, can you explain a little bit about how the Union Gospel Mission in Vancouver came to be or how um, it came into existence? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, there's Union Gospel Mission in Vancouver is the same as Union Gospel Mission across Metro Vancouver. So there are, are numerous facilities and different activities that are going on. But if you hear about it in Kelowna or Seattle or different places like you mentioned, it, it's actually different groups all doing great work. So pleased about that. How we, how we came to be was um, we are over 70 years old and it was post World War II. There's lots of people in the community. Um, that have, had returned home from war. It was um, majorly alcoholism that was a problem. There's people on the streets. There was a lot of poverty. And uh, the, the founder, um, I believe his name was Bob Stacy, had um, gone to New York and saw uh, the missions there, and what they were doing, how they were helping get people off the street. There were similar issues in different cities, um, obviously going through similar struggles, and just saw um, what the soup kitchens were doing. So he took that, um, those ideas and principles and applied them here just with a, a number of volunteers. And they got together. They had six beds to give to people and soup. 
they made soup every day and gave it out. Uh, they had their, their first Christmas meal, and we keep that tradition to this day. We don't do it on Christmas Day anymore because there's so many things already going on, but during the Christmas season, and obviously we, we've grown quite a lot. There's a whole continuum of care that we operate along. We have emergency services, development programs, and then um, maintenance and preventative programs. Mm -hmm. So um, are you participating in the maintenance programs, or can you tell me a little bit about the maintenance program from your perspective? Well, when I finished the A&D program, I, that's when I took Photo 101. Um, I, I also had the opportunity and the uh, honor to uh, now work in the soup kitchen where I used to go in line. Ah, so, yeah. So um, I uh, get to bridge, bridge the gap. Um, I've tried recovery a number of times in the past, and uh, there's always this rush to grab a life afterwards. And uh, I think uh, the spirit inside me, if we're going to keep with the theme a little, um, really needs to grow slowly. Um, you know, and uh, so I was able to be honored uh, to be able to work part time for the mission itself um, and live in the building in independent living. Um, I took the photo one, 101 course as a hobby for myself, and now I think that I, I, it's going to bore a bigger project for me. Okay, on uh, that note, um, we'll come back to that. Right now, we're going to break for a sponsor, and um, we'll be right back after the sponsor break. Thank you very much. enjoyed that sponsor break and Mark um, you've um, done a lot in your life been through a lot in your life and you're doing some beautiful photography uh, and arts and you're also a poet or a writer so where do you see yourself going or where would you like to be in five years personally and with your art uh, Personally, I'd like to continue my recovery and uh, start healing some of the relationships with my family that uh, I've started with, um, with my art and uh, the other artistic talents that I've been putting out, the photography, some of the, my poetry. Um, I was really hoping to be able to publish um, and, you know, for the magic goal would be to publish a book so that other people might not be able uh, would be able to be affected in, in a positive way towards either not going into drugs and alcohol or uh, or um, coming out of it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we have so much going on down there. Um, the beauty that's down there is not seen and the beauty that's within us isn't seen either. So mm -hmm. There's also a little bit of humor I saw in one <laughs> yeah. of your photos which was the the uh, no stopping sign and the um, and the shoes yeah. that were parked there. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. There, there's humor as well, which is nice. And um, I'm yeah, happy. when you get out of those normal circles of just going from the shelter bed to the street to the next meal to the next meal to find your dry pair of clothes, you, when you start to have some time where you can actually look at yourself or look inwards and you get that walk with your camera, you never know what you're going to run across. And I, when I saw that, I just like went, wait a minute, no stopping here, but the shoes are here. <laughs> yeah. Um, being homeless and looking at some of the pictures where lights are on in the windows and you have some really dramatic cloud scenes and the storms and 
but we see those lights and when you know we're walking on the street and we're going home to a place that maybe isn't necessarily safe or where you want to be um, when I looked at those photos I thought oh that took me back to when I was you know walking to where I was going to sleep and thinking I'll have a place of my own soon one of these days but they always look so warm inside and you think oh there's a nice family in there so it was quite um, delightful um, because I don't feel like that now when I'm walking home I know I'm going to a place where I'm happy and, and, and it's a safe place Right. And then another photo you had, which was, oh, that's Crab Park again. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the photo of the path leading, um, and you don't know where it's going, was very interesting. And there were lots of bush and shrubs, and it was at nighttime. And I thought, oh, is that ever pretty? And then I realized, I was thinking, um, that normally I would be thinking, oh, i got to be careful here. Who's going to jump out of the bush? But the way that you... Uh, shot it and the warmth in the photo and, and the texture of the photo I didn't think that at all so um, wonderful wonderful work Thank you. uh, you're welcome and um, can you please tell us what um, mission Union Gospel Mission is today all the things that are available absolutely so we like to think of our programs along the continuum of care and I broke it down the three categories um, I think when a lot of people think of Union Gospel Mission, they know us for our meals. They know meals are very important. That is important to us, but that's actually just the start. Uh, it's not the end. It's not feed a person. Great, we've done our job. Um, the meals are there because we want to connect with people. We also want to meet people where they're at. They're, they're in distress. Um, they need meals. They need shelter. They need clothing, basic supplies. But the goal is to help move people as far along the continuum as they can. It would be wonderful if everyone can end with a job, with a family, completely whole, completely healed. Not everyone's necessarily going to get there depending on their, their mental and physical limitations, but we want to help people go as far as they can. And so the emergency services keep people alive, they keep people connected, and then Mark is a great example of this. He came to our meals, he was in our shelter, and then he started to hear about our recovery program. Obviously, Mark at the end of the day doesn't want to stay in addiction, we don't want him to stay in addiction, and so there comes that day where he says, you know what, I have hope now, I, I feel more, more dignified. Um, people that access our services and other services in the community often start to, to feel loved again, start to believe in themselves and have that, um, kind of gumption again because it's going to take a lot of work to get out of their situation mm -hmm. and so they can get in the program because it's a lot of work isn't it Mark? Oh, yeah. it's, not just, it's not just oh great now now i'm in now it's now it's an easy ride it's Lots a, it's, more to come yeah it's a tough ride but um there's development programs like that and within it other programs like the photo one yeah. like art therapy for the women um different activities programs and there's a lot of counseling that goes on so a lot of things to um move people along and, uh, and then, of course, housing, having a safe place to stay, mm -hmm. a place um, that uh, there's going to be way less temptations. And often, it's, uh, there are, we do have some housing that's, that's absolutely permanent, but some of the housing is just for two years because there's a huge, there's not yeah. enough in the city. There's just not mm -hmm. enough abstinence-based housing. Mm -hmm. And so we found that two years is kind of the magic number of people have been through recovery and stay close for up to two years. They, they, they've had time to get a job, to develop their networks, to, to integrate into society, to kind of come along some of those temptations and overcome them and, and know, okay, I that normally at one time I would have, you know, um, gone downhill with that, but I, I have the tools now that I need, I have the people around me, and they can, can go into regular housing and, and be a lot more successful and the um, they've already built those networks, so that's fantastic, and that opens up more space for more people to have that to kind of climb along the ladder in that way. And of course, we have well, I should say, of course, we don't know this. We have prevention programs. We have um, work with kids after school programs. We just started a youth drop-in now. It's really small, but yeah, just hoping that um, we can work with the community so that there's people that never need to come through our doors in a different way. As we know, those kids we hope um, just kind of skip around. They're vulnerable, but they have a, they have opportunity, and we want them to. Get the education help they need. What's the um, what's the youth program? It's just starting. It's small. So what are you doing with um, the youth program? All these program is right now is a drop-in center. So our Eastsiders after school program has gone up to grade seven. And what we've noticed is grade eight is a very vulnerable year. Okay. <laughs> you change schools and these kids have been doing great and they're working with us and there's not a natural next step for them that's close in a familiar place. So we've just opened it up to um, 
one day a week is a drop-in, another day a week um, we facilitate them working with Urban Promise, so um, going and actually having a leadership component to their life so they can then learn to be examples for other kids and work with younger kids. So mm -hmm. it's literally basically a pilot program right now. Oh We're just God. working on it, but just opening up that gap for that next step. Obviously, we don't have you know all the funds to do all the different things we want to do, and we know we can't do everything, so we try to do the things that we can well. Right now, our big focus is women in the Women and Families. We are, um, yeah, just working towards some some programming there. That there'll be some announcements about um, in the very near future, but about um, filling some gaps for women and the women and their babies, actually. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll um, come visit you guys and, and and talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, see how that's going. Um, it, it's um, uh, funny you were talking about you know the food and getting people in and, um, and and then you know having them be able to get interested in other possibilities right and I did a workshop with uh, my friend Kim who's a, um, a healer she's traveled all over the world say and she's traveled to Africa she went to Haiti um, to do work after the um, the uh, tsunami was it mm -hmm. yeah so she was here, and so I did this workshop with her, and it was um, using art, uh, different drama games and drawing games and stuff for um, counseling and healing. And so um, we got to do these, these games and stuff like that. And uh, at the end, after you've done all these different things, you, you, you're with a group, and your group does a, a presentation, right? And it's um, uh, a play. You, do, you make your own mm -hmm. little play. And um, so we ended up, I and someone else ended up being uh, street kids and, you know, we're going in and we're um, st stealing the apples, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're thinking we're being really cool, we're stealing the apples. And, uh, and so um, as it turns out, we find out, oh, we weren't so smart, we weren't stealing the apples, they were giving them to us, right? <laughs> but, um, and then um, we got into, you know, the, the talking to the elders and, and stuff like that. So it was um, funny when we were when we were doing it, and um, there were a lot of native people in the group. It was um, actually uh, indigenizing the these theater and art programs that have been around for decades, right? But indigenizing it and putting some. Uh, Aboriginal aspects into it, but it was lots of fun, and I'd never done anything like that. But um, it made a, a big difference in um, just that three days. I laughed more than I had in a <laughs> year, right? So art can certainly be a, a, a big influence in people's lives. So it's really good that um, you guys are doing this. And um, is there anything else um, that you would like to share? Um, on my, on uh, anything? No. Is there uh, anything I've missed or anyth anything no, you'd like I just, to say? No, I just, you know, I, I, I really, uh, you know, when you were talking about the course that you took, I was, I was going through just the memories of Photo 101 of the staff members that took the course, that volunteered to, to teach us, the gentleman that came in who has his own studio that ta also taught us, and, and the walks, and like we would be out there for two and a half, three hours, and it'd be like nobody wanted the night to end because we would start at like six o'clock at night and it's summertime and then as the, as the course progressed it would turn into nighttime but we would be out there freezing and, and you know and, and we we'd still be out there going well how many shots you got left well, I got six because I'm waiting for the perfect one and <laughs> and we the, the, the just the really good time that we had in the building and and how important that is to me in my recovery because what it showed me was that these people were taking time out of their day it wasn't it wasn't my counselor who was paid to see me uh, it wasn't, you know, sorry, can't we, sorry. Um, but it, it was these people that were, and they became, and they became friends. And, you know, um, there's some pictures that I didn't bring. Uh, one I took of my teacher in a, it, it, when we did a classroom night, and it was just his head that showed up, and I did a double exposure of it. And I always take a look at that picture, <laughs> and I'm just like, this is, this is the man that I see, because it's not always the man that you, you see running around in the kitchen at lunchtime or at dinner time if he has to stay late. Right. This is the man I remember. This is this, this Ukrainian man, immigrant that came to Canada and was giving of his in, of his time mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Well, we're almost finished here, 
and uh, I'd love to see that photo. It sounds yeah. kind of maybe I, funny. <laughs> I don't. I don't like doing a lot of portraits of people. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if that's because I'm just putting my own roadblocks in, or, or if it's just that uh, with people there's so much staging involved. I, 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 like I, it's really an art form for these guys that are taking the camera shots right now because, uh, you know, that is it. You're ter you're to you've got a person on the other side, whereas uh, with nature, God created it and we created the buildings. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah, so it's just like, it, I don't know. There's just, I haven't got there yet. Great, so. okay. Well, thank you very, very <laughs> much for Lots coming come. in and, and sharing. Thank you. And um, so open and honest, and that's beautiful in itself. And thank you for um, uh, telling the audience what um, the Union Gospel Mission does. And um, thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah there, now you're pulling the, you're you. pulling the, uh, the colors of the window into into place. Yeah. You know, and right up to the little buds that are growing on the leaves. It's amazing how you see something with the naked eye, and then when you put it through the camera, the camera takes the rest of it and pulls it in for you. Oh yeah, yeah, see you've got the tree going in there and everything else, which has got the new growth and, and in particular the blues of this, of this picture um, really come out through the camera lens. being so different from one area to another, I, I always had people looking out for me. Um, that still exists today, uh, despite, despite the stories that people hear of, of fighting and of violence. There's a camaraderie down here that is unbroken. Um, people do look after people on the street here. You will see friends sharing their last drink, their last smoke with someone. You will see um, a genuine care and concern for elderly, uh, for people that have uh, uh, disabilities that uh, um, may restrict them in certain ways and physical means. Um, the, the code still exists down here where you look after yourself and you look after your brother and your brother will look after you. Um, it's not, um, it's not a, an inner city war that we have to look at every day. Um, there's more love down here and there's more um, more culture down here than you would really even 